Everything about Japan feels different. The trains, the restaurants, the bathrooms, the convenience shops, and the wonderfully polite people. We guide you through what we learn so that you can move more confidently through this beautiful country. Welcome back to Finding Gina Marie, where we share our lives as full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. This is our first trip to Japan. And after being here for a month or more, we are really ready to share a lot of experiences that we've had in this country, but it's going to take a few episodes. So this first one is really about our initial experience and the differences we've seen. Everybody expects things to be different in other parts of the world. And we bring you some of the really big differences and also some of the small things that we thought were noteworthy. Let's start by talking about money. First thing you need to do when you get to Japan is stop at an ATM because a lot of this cash is for your travel cards that you're going to need in Japan, lots of trains and restaurants. So if you're stopping and just eating your first thing when you get in Japan, you might need cash. So. Stop there first. ATMs are very straightforward to use and they work with all foreign debit cards. Getting around Japan is pretty easy because there's a lot of trains, a lot of subways. There's plenty of opportunities to get from point A to point B without using too much of your own energy. Just get on a train and go. The problem is these train stations are used by everybody, so they can be very crowded. In fact, the Tokyo train station, for example, has over a million people every single day that go through it. Now, you may not be going through Tokyo, but just bear in mind that every tra train station is going to be busy, especially on the weekends. Yeah. We were unprepared for how busy a Sunday was going to be. Yeah, Kyoto station on Sunday, crazy, crazy. So many people, so be aware of that. And also be aware that sometimes there's a lot of options for trains and they may look confusing, but you just have to take your time, slow down and use Google apps or Apple maps and just try to get yourself ready to go on the next train and it'll work out. It, we, we panicked a little bit too much, I think, at our first experience with which line should we be on, which track should we go to, which section of the train station should we be in. You know, it can be overwhelming. Which brings up the point of just really slow down, yeah. take a breath, don't feel like you need to rush onto the first train, just really take time because you're going to be going up escalators and down escalators or really more even stairs. Yeah. And you want to make sure that you really have your bearings and you understand where you're headed so that you don't have to do a lot of backtracking or that you don't get on the wrong train. Carrying suitcases downstairs as we did, to get to the wrong track was not fun because then we had to carry the suitcases back up. Even our small ones, it's still a lot of work sometimes. We did find that a lot of places have escalators. They're just not right in front of you. And a lot of them have elevators. You just have to kind of walk around a bit, which means you're going to need to give yourself more time to find maybe the easiest route to get through the train stations. It's interesting how everybody falls in line. Nobody tries to cut or go to the right and walk. As it says, do not walk, and they listen. And I feel like a broken record because I talk about this a lot, but pack less than you would normally want to pack. Because if you're carrying a, like a full-sized suitcase and not just a carry-on size, if you have to take stairs, it's very difficult. So um, don't hurt your back. <laughs> and, and while there are in most places, some elevators or escalators, you don't want to, when you're already overwhelmed, have, have to find where elevators or escalators are on top of everything else. Yeah, I think the subways are mostly stairs. So that's where you're going to get into the biggest trouble if you've got a big heavy suitcase. And trains are on time. They run very frequently and they leave right away. So don't think you have like an extra couple minutes just to get on the train. It might be a little bit late. It's never late. It's never late. And for as bustling as everything is in the train station, the culture of trains is really to not talk on the phone while you're on a train and not to talk loudly if you're talking with someone else. It's a very quiet or reasonably quiet experience. Yeah, almost everyone's on their phone, but they're looking down at something or they're reading a newspaper. It's very much a personal space, keep quiet and just be polite to everybody. And in general, in Japan, polite seems to be the way for most everything. 
short person alert. One of the things is that trains can be very crowded, especially during rush hour. But if you're short like me, uh, I'm used to sometimes having to hold on to a very high uh, handle if I can't get a seat. And because some people in Japan are a little bit shorter, they have longer cords so that you can hold on and not have to pull your arm out of the socket. <laughs> A win for Judy. <laughs> Short people everywhere unite. <laughs> when we got to Tokyo Airport, we knew we needed to get a transit card. We thought, hey, you can get those on your iPhone, just stick them in your wallet. So we tried to do that. Turns out you can't pay for them with foreign credit cards. That's all we have. So we gave up on that and started wandering around looking for ways to buy cards and saw these signs all around that there's a chip shortage. So it was a little frustrating. We thought we could just get a passport card or get it on our actual Apple wallet, but neither of those works because they're not selling the passport cards anymore. So but then we did find a table that was a big advertisement for PASMO passport card, which apparently is for visitors, which we were, and it allowed us to get a 28-day card and recharge it whenever we need to during our time in Japan. The cost of it was 1,500 yen, and 500 of that is a deposit. So we got 1,000 yen to use on the transit system, which isn't enough. So we had to quickly dash over to a little machine that charges cards and added more money to it. And a very helpful man guided us through the process since we were all new to it. And especially you had to use cash. Yes. We couldn't use a card in it, which is why you wanted to start at the ATM before you came to get a <laughs> transit card, which you absolutely will need. Yes. Because we were here more than 28 days, we needed to do something else. And instead of getting another PASMO card, we were able to get an ICOCA card. Yeah, we were in Kyoto at the time, which has JR Line trains which means you can get their card, which all the cards work about the same, so you don't have to worry about which card to get. Just get the one that you can find the location that you're at. Since we were planning to travel between multiple cities in Japan, like from Tokyo to Kyoto to Hiroshima, we looked at getting a JR Rail Pass, which was supposed to like give us advantages. We could get on the train quicker at any point. We could get reserved seats easier. Unfortunately, the prices keep going up for that. People said a couple years ago, it was a good deal. Now, it is not. It is not. You have to travel a lot between multiple cities on the high-speed rails to get your money's worth out of it. So if you're only going back and forth between a couple cities, skip the JR Rail card. It's just not going to be worth it. The convenient thing is now that you have one of these travel cards, you can put money on them and you can use them like a debit card. So you can go into convenience stores and they will accept that as a form of payment. These even work at drink machines. Which are all over Japan. <laughs> A friend recommended that if we're traveling on the high-speed trains and we need to get seats and tickets, it's okay to go to an agent that actually is in a booth that sells the tickets. You don't have to try to work your way through the machines. And I'd highly recommend that as first-time travelers, we have got a lot of help on where we can sit on the train. And even though the language barrier is there a little bit, they're very polite and very helpful. And when you're actually riding the high-speed trains, you're not using your IC card. You're getting a paper ticket. So make sure you hang on to those. They're very important. You don't want to lose those. Now I only have one because at the, I'm at the end of the line. <laughs> we have an entire section on food, but when it comes to trains, when you're taking a small regional train, it's impolite to eat on it. But if you're taking a high-speed train, it's a great idea to get something to tide you over for the long train ride. The station is full of places that sell little bento boxes and they can be elaborate, they can be very straightforward, uh, but it's perfectly acceptable to get one beforehand. Make sure you accept a bag if it's offered to you because you do need to take back your trash. There's no place on the trains for you to drop it off. Just make sure you leave yourself enough time to pick up those bento boxes. They're beautiful and a lot of the food is just wonderful. <laughs> it's not like fast food. You're getting some really high quality stuff. Yeah, you can eat sushi and trust that it's going to be fresh and delicious. And the high-speed trains especially are really nice about space. There's plenty of room for your uh, carry-on luggage overhead, and there's also some space in the back if you have larger luggage. They have room for that. And the leg room in these seats are just glorious, right? Yeah, very, very generous. In fact, you could even put a small carry-on bag in front of your knees if you aren't six foot four. <laughs> I'm not. 
<laughs> you know. And if you are using one of the regional trains and you're using your IC card and you tap it and the little flaps close and buzz, don't panic. It's just probably because your amount's too low on the card and you need to charge it. So there are fare adjustment machines or IC charge machines within the gates somewhere. Just find one and charge up your card. Make sure you have cash though, because they probably aren't going to take your credit card. So although we talked a lot about trains, you can also get by just by walking to many places. Just be aware that drivers drive on the left side of the road. And so when you're walking, you should also be walking on the left side. And same for escalators. You should be on that side. Technically, you shouldn't be walking on escalators. There's typically a sign that says do not walk. But there are some escalators where people are on the right side instead of the left side. <laughs> it seems like the the whole group knows which side to be on, but for the most part, you're gonna be on the left side. Follow the locals, that's what we do in every country we're in. And bicycles are often on sidewalks here, they really don't have a lot of bike lanes on the street, so you have to be aware that they're gonna come at you out from the front or the back, and there may actually be a section of the sidewalk that's listed for bicycles, but more often than not, you're just sharing a very skinny space with the bike riders, and stay to your left if you can so that they can pass by you. Don't meander around the sidewalk because they don't like to ring bells, they don't like to be impolite, and they're just trying to get around you. There is so much order in <laughs> Japan as one of the things that we've just really noticed. The yeah, queuing here rivals the British in the ability to stand in line patiently. And amazingly, at crosswalks, you know, you can have a really skinny side street with a crosswalk, but if that crosswalk says, don't walk, people don't walk. They don't, they don't cheat. I mean, rarely do they cheat, you know? Almost never. In fact, it's one of those, oh my gosh, somebody yeah. <laughs> just crossed. That was red. <laughs> it went across. What's happening? <laughs> so just be aware that you shouldn't just cross because you don't see traffic or because it's acceptable in your country to just go if you're not seeing cars. It's not acceptable here. Yeah. Be orderly. Be polite. Just, again, be like the locals. Yeah, who do follow the rules. Yes. The Japanese are very tidy. In every single restaurant that we've gone to, you will get a packaged wet wipe. And that's to clean your hands before you eat. And we normally kind of keep it with the wrapper so that at the end we can wash our hands as well. Yeah, it's not really to be used on your mouth. No. <laughs> <laughs> I did that though. <laughs> but some of the fancy restaurants actually had a hot towel wrapped in the plastic. So the idea is that you're supposed to be cleaning. You came in from the street, you either use the hand sanitizer and then the towels, stay tidy in Japan. It's likely you'll be in one of the market areas. And although there are food stalls everywhere, it's impolite for you to be walking and eating. So the expectation is that you're going to eat the food near, right, right alongside the booth where you purchased your food. Yeah, some of them have seating inside, but many of them don't. So you will have to kind of stay near and you'll see the signs all over the place. No walking and eating, no walking and eating. They really mean it. It's, it's just an impolite thing. And with the theme of tidy in Japan, there are little baskets under most seats in restaurants when you walk in to hold your backpack or umbrellas or whatever else. We didn't have a lot of sake, but the sake we did have was hysterical because Kevin about lost his mind. <laughs> uh, I'll keep the story short, but it is a sign of hospitality to have your sake cup overflow. So <laughs> it did into a little saucer and... Poured the first bottle, the bottle got empty. It was right at the brim. I went, that was a perfect pour. And he went, got another bottle and kept pouring. I'm like, oh God, it's it's going into the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> ah, generous people here in Japan. But you have a wet wipe, so you wipe your hands afterwards. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> we love pastries with our coffee and we've visited several pastry shops around town. The interesting thing is you go get your own pastries, but they have trays and tongs, metal tongs, and you get a tray, a tong, and you pick out your pastries, put them on your tray, and then you take them up to the cashier. And after taking it to the cashier, they will go ahead and transfer those items onto another tray, and that is what then you'll take to your table. Famously in Japan, the convenience stores are everywhere, and you can buy really good stuff there, not just snacks. Everything imaginable in the way of chips. But hot food too, 
and they will even give you utensils with your food. So if you get uh, some sushi, you know, you'll get chopsticks, you'll get a hand wipe and a plastic wrapper. And some sauce. Yeah. And all of the fresh food is really fresh. So you'll see, again, sushi and a, a lot of things that you would think, oh, do I really want to buy this at a convenience store? Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like gas station sushi in the U.S. where you want to avoid it at all costs. And although you'll encounter some language barriers, you'll also find that in restaurants, most places have a menu with pictures for non-Japanese visitors. And you'll likely see English written in smaller type. We've also used the Google Translate app, which makes things very clear and straightforward. And sometimes you can even be outside of some restaurants, especially when you're in big food court areas. They will have lacquered the fake food. <laughs> <laughs> fake food. That is great to show you exactly what you're getting. We sit down at some restaurants, they have an app or a website that you can place your order on. If so, you'll see a QR code on your table. So before you get frustrated that the server hasn't helped you, scan the code and place your order that way. The restaurants have a call button on the table that you push when you're ready to order. Some restaurants even have a kiosk to pay for your order first, and then you sit down with your number in hand and wait for them to serve you. In nearly every restaurant we've been to, they will leave the bill on your table after they deliver your food. And the expectation is that you will go to the front desk and that's where you'll pay. We've never had a situation where the server has actually taken our money. Grab your ticket, go up to the front, and make sure you have cash because some restaurants don't take credit cards. And like many other countries outside the U.S., taxes included in your restaurant bill or even the things you purchase at stores. There often are long lines for people to get into certain restaurants. So there's kind of a culture here where you eat and leave. Yeah. Now that doesn't apply to every place, but it does apply to a lot of places. So especially ramen noodle places yeah. and uh, like that, you'll need to just eat and leave and make room for the next person who's standing in line patiently waiting for a table. Yeah, especially if it's in a busy train station, you're going to see the restaurants have queues all over the place. The Japanese like their coffee both hot and cold, and I was surprised that every time I ordered a cafe latte or any other kind of hot coffee that I would just assume is hot, they would always ask. So be aware that you're going to have to say your preference as to hot or cold. Same with tea, which I just assumed was going to be hot all the time. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. They like the cold drinks here. And we're here in the fall, so that's even more unexpected. You would maybe think that would be the case in the summer, but it's not. When you're ordering a meal, often on the menu, you'll see an option for a set. A set means that you're getting extras on the side of your meal instead of just the entree. And one of those extras commonly is miso soup. And when it first arrived, I wasn't sure how to drink it because there was no spoon. Uh, there's often a lid, you'll take the lid off and you'll just drink from the bowl. Yeah. And It's polite. <laughs> <laughs> just try not to slurp. Actually, I hear a lot of people slurping. I think slurping's polite, too. I don't know. I'm not comfortable with it, but... Especially for restaurants that have a fair amount of staff, you'll notice that anytime you enter or leave, and that even applies to hotels, yeah. you'll be greeted. So just don't go on your merry way. Take a moment and um, be respectful, a slight bow, give a greeting, and do that on both as you exit and enter. And we knew that arigato meant uh, thank you, but we found out that it's more polite to say arigato gozaimasu. The formal version in case you don't know somebody and you'll hear that a lot if you listen closely that's what they're saying to you when you buy something or pay for something. One of our tour guides mentioned that it will go a long way if you say oishi and that means yummy and <laughs> look up the correct pronunciation but uh, they will respect and appreciate that you took the effort to let them know their food was delicious. Although it's great to go into the little side alleys and find the little out of the way traditional restaurants. I have a Japanese fried chicken bento box. And you got the udon, yes. miso udon. Mm -hmm. and nice and big, so no hunger later. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> There's also entire food courts in buildings. One of the buildings near Kyoto Station 
actually has several floors of restaurants and you can find some really good stuff there. You just have to kind of wander around these floors. Including Kyoto Station. Don't think that you're getting lesser quality food when no. you're eating at a train station. But we have done the quaint little places in the back streets and they're wonderful too. I wouldn't avoid those at all. The malls and food courts are especially nice when you're not quite sure what you want and you're just waiting for something to strike you. Yeah. There's every sort of cuisine that you can imagine. Especially if you just want to wander around and look at all the fake food. <laughs> Bathrooms in Japan, whether you're in your hotel room or a train station or at a temple or any public space, are very fancy. The toilets themselves have bidets built into them and they're really high tech. You'll have different levels of spray, you'll have heating, you'll even have a button that can play sound so it muffles whatever you're doing on the toilet. It might be confusing occasionally because the, with all of the buttons that are alongside the toilet, sometimes the flush button is on the wall. So if you don't see it, don't panic, just look for it there. And surprisingly, with all the fancy equipment that is there for the toilets, there really isn't a lot of places to dry your hands. Some of the bigger places have had the blow hand dryers, but you're not gonna see towel dispensers in most places, and sometimes nothing at all. Sometimes people actually bring in their own little towels they carry on them. Yeah, in fact, they're washcloth size, and we've seen them available at souvenir shops. If you've had experiences or traveled in Japan, we'd love to hear about them below in the comments. Before we talk to you about shopping, we're excited to share that we've started our own absolutely free community forum that we are calling La Familia. You can ask questions about trip planning and all things related to travel there. We're also giving you a chance to peek behind the scenes and are offering a bunch of other perks we're calling Gelato Levels, if you decide you want to help support us financially as well. A video with the details is linked in the description below. If you're shopping and spending over a certain amount of money, you'll want to bring your passport with you because there is a duty tax that they will have to levy on you. But if you can avoid it, it by bringing your passport and they can scan it. So it's not enough to just to use a digital version of it. Oftentimes on the price tags, you'll see two prices there. The lower one's the one you'll pay if you are bringing your passport and are able to avoid the local taxes. If you're a full-time traveler like we are, your electronics typically will have voltages that work for any country you're in. Unlike in Europe, when you're worried about getting too much voltage, the 240 volts, in Japan it's actually lower than the 110 that's in the US or 120 in the US. Sometimes it's down to 100. And that can make it a little difficult for things like hair dryers, right? Right, yes, for sure. They're a little weaker <laughs> than you have when you're running them in Europe. And I thought we were all set for Japan because we had a lot of U.S. plugs, which Japan uses the same two-pronged plug as the U.S. Unfortunately, even though they do have some three-pronged plugs in Japan, they're pretty rare. So I had a power strip with a three-pronged plug on it. I had to go to the electronics store and buy a little adapter to knock it down to two prongs because that's what you find everywhere. So if you have three-pronged equipment, get a little adapter. The minute you step foot in Japan, you will realize how clean everything is. And one of the reasons for that is that people are expected to throw out their garbage at home. Right. So there are no trash cans anywhere in the city that we've seen. And we've been in multiple cities so far. We haven't been everywhere. But <laughs> there aren't places to throw garbage. You're not eating on the street. So there's no need to have trash cans anywhere. I've been surprised to see so much residential area. We picked this area because we thought that it was going to be, I don't know, a bit more commercial, a bit more um, the center of the city. And even though it's a pretty popular area to be in, it's interesting to see that it's really a sprawling city and there are a lot of people who ride bikes too. <laughs> It's interesting though because we're not really seeing a whole lot of recycling. There are certain places that have uh, receptacles for plastic bottles. Then it looks like they everything else is burned. That was a little different to come across. And they take care of their trash when they put out the trash bags for the garbage pickup too. They often have these nets they put over top of them to avoid any kind of animals getting at the garbage or the garbage bags being moved about I guess. Japan doesn't really have a tipping culture. I think the only things that are maybe an exception are a tour guide or if you are visiting a ryokan. But otherwise, it's considered offensive to even offer a tip here. And in Japan, there's a big slipper culture because they don't like you wearing shoes in certain places like temples 
or even any wood floors that might be in hotel rooms or real cans. So they offer sometimes two types of slippers. One is for inside your room, and the other one is marked for going to an onsen or public bath or just walking around a hotel. Some hotels may offer kimonos and you can wear them throughout the entire establishment, but the intention is for you not to wear them outside as street wear. We certainly don't think it's possible to know everything about a culture after just spending a month here. So please let us know in the comments anything our viewers should know. If this episode has been helpful, we hope you will subscribe if you haven't already. We have an entire series on Japan coming to you and we don't want you to miss it. And check out FindingGenomery.com. There's lots of articles and more information about our trip to Japan. Until next time. Until next time. If this video has been helpful, we hope you'll subscribe if you aren't already. We don't want you to miss any of our future episodes from our time in e Egypt. <laughs> so close. We're right next door. <laughs> our outtakes are going to be longer than our video. No kidding. <laughs> the little things do matter. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Not going to leave it in. Yeah. Goes at the end. Goes at the end. That's, that's what I would take. <laughs> okay. <laughs>